Okay, this tutorial is about using the collections feature in QLC Plus to uh, program easier and faster. So let's take a look. Just built a little stage here. I've got eight incandescents. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got some color changers in here. Uh, they're red, green, blue, white, amber, ultraviolet. And then I've also got some moving lights. Intimidator, Wash Zooms, 350 IRCs set up on the stage. So what I'll typically do when I'm doing programming, I'm going to go over my functions window, is kind of create some building blocks that I might use for programming a show. So take for instance my incandescent lights, I call them Lico's here. So I have Lico set up, here's the Lico's at 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70, 80, 90, and 100. So basically lighting the full stage at, at different levels of lighting. So there's some building blocks I can use there. Then I have my LED PAR lamps, and I can have those in colors. I have aqua, black, which would be off, blue, green, orange, pink, red, and then white. So what I can do then, using collections, I can combine these into an effect. For example, this collection here is called Wash 1, and all I did was add my Lico's at 50% and my PAR light, my blue PAR light's at 50. And I can start this up to see what it looks like. And I have another one I've created here called Wash 2, where I have my Lico's at full and my PAR, my RGB PAR light's at red. Now again, this is represented on here. You're going to be looking at it on the stage to see how the colors mix and all that. Now, one of the neat things you can do with this, once you have this set up and you start it, you can then select this, dump the DMX values, give this a title like Scene 1, and say OK. Now this is incorporated into scene one. So I can go to scene one here, take a look at my fixtures, see what's going on, and then adjust them. So if there are some things that I want to adjust here, like individual, I might want individual lamps off, I can turn those off or on and do some fine tuning as far as this goes. But at least it's a, a quick way to get those PAR lamps all up at blue and combine them with the Lico's. So let me just show you again how we do a collection. So you, se you select collection from up here, and I'll call this wash three. And then I select what I want to put in this collection. So I can slide down here and say, well, I'd like to have my Lico's at 50% uh, here. Put those in. And then I would like to have my par washes, par colors, maybe uh, green for this one. So I have Lico's at 50 and the PAR is at green. And it's that easy. You put them in and then like I said, you can always click up here, save it as a scene and then go and then tweak it a little bit. But it's a real quick way using these building blocks to put together a scene. Now some other things that you can use the collections for. Um, let's say that I want to do a lightning effect on stage. Well, I'm going to use my PAR lamps to create the lightning so I can do like a white flash and then black, white flash and then black. So here's my PAR lamp lightning effect up here. And we can actually take a look at this happening. And it's a single shot and I have the timing that it just flashes twice real quick, goes off for a second, flashes twice. So and I would coordinate that with okay, so an audio effect for lightning. But now I can take this chase that's running and then I can also add in my Lico's so that it's not just the lamps. And that's what I've done here. So I've done my lightning chase and I brought in my incandescent Lico's at 30%. So the total effect looks like this. So I do have those Lico's up a little bit. So that's a, a kind of a neat thing you can do with that. Uh, this one you can't convert over because it's, an, it's a running chase and that can't be done in a single scene. So you'd have to leave this as a collection. 
However, you can put this collection right into a queue list. Just like you can put a scene in a queue list, you can put a collection into a queue list if you want to do that. So typically what I would do here is start with a stage light setting and then my queue would go to this for the lightning and then it would go back to another scene setting. But it's a really easy way to correct to create that lightning effect without uh, going crazy with a lot of other things because I've got my Lecos on and I just do my lightning with my strobes. Now another thing that I typically do when I'm using moving lights on the stage, you want to have your positions laid out for your moving lights and then you also want to have any other things like colors or zoom or gobos, whatever else you're going to do with your moving lights. So I just did a quick one here. So I have my zoom colors. So these are two moving lights here. And the amber doesn't show up because QLC only deals with red, green, and blue. But if I do aqua, you can see that you're showing aqua. Now, there's no position, so they're in their home position. That's why you just see the aqua being spilled out on the side walls. But I do have aqua programmed into them, or blue, or green, or pink, or red. So those are my zoom, my moving light colors. And then here's my moving light uh, positions. I have center stage programmed in. I have downstage center, upstage center, upstage left, that's again from the actor's viewpoint and upstage right. So now I can take and do um, collections with these where I do, for example, the zoom center stage aqua. And then I just play that and there's my zoom center stage aqua. Makes it really easy because I could do, if you want to move this into black, I could just use the scene setting and then move my light in without the lights being on and then I can use a collection here to have the lights come on and in the same position. I did another one here. This is a zoom upstage red, so it's my moving lights upstage red. And then again, you can go and you can create a whole scene with these if you want to. So here I have Lico's at 40, the PARs at blue, and the zoom is center stage with an aqua look to it. So I've just combined the whole thing. Uh, this you could save as a scene because it is not uh, there's no moving chase in here. So again, if I wanted to, I could click up here and just say scene three. And there it's in there and it's dumping all the channels. Boom. Now if I take a look at scene three, I could, it's the same thing. I can go in and I can edit this and tweak this and go in and edit and adjust my different colors or whatever I want to do. If I want to, you know, change some of the colors of the Moving lights, green, blue, if I want to change intensity of the moving lights, wherever I have them, if I want to change the intensity of my PAR lamps, I can do that. So then you can go in and you can tweak the whole setting once you save that as a scene. But it's a real quick way to be able to build scenes and put that together. Now another thing you can do with moving lights, say we're running an effect. So I've got a, an effect figure eight here going on for my moving lights. Again, this is a position thing. So I can combine the effect moving eight with a color and we'll call this zoom red eight. So I've got my moving lights set to red. I've got this effect running on the moving lights and then I also just tossed in my Lico's, my uh, incandescent lights at 30 percent. And we get this. So again, a real, real quick way of building things. Then I could just simply put this in. Since this is an effect and it's something moving, I think you have to keep this as a collection. But again, you can put this collection right into the queue list. Instead of using a scene, you can actually use the collection in the queue list. So hopefully this is helpful to you. It's a real quick way of putting together scenes. And then you can just go and tweak them afterwards to what you want and actually save them as actual scenes.